Hello and welcome to the third video in using AGK. In, in the last two videos we started off the process, we put a sprite on the screen and then we started moving the sprite around the screen. Now we want to put something on the screen that the player can interact with. So we're going to put a wall on the, on, the, on, the, on the game so that when the player hits the wall they'll stop. So the first thing I'll need to do is I'll need to go to my game and in the media folder I've copied a, um, a barrier, I've called it barrier land because it's in landscape view and it's just a picture of a wall and it's a PNG file. So I need to make sure that any graphics I'm going to use are in that media folder. So I've done that, so the next thing I need to do now is start, is start to load that image into the game. So, load image will be number two, and it was barrierland.png. And then I'll need to um, decide where it's going to go on the screen so I called it barrier land equals two and we've got barrier land x pause now where are we gonna where are we gonna put that on the screen so let's put it at um, 300 across and we'll put barrier land y position and we'll put that 300 across as well, so, so they'll, they'll both be there. Um, so there we have it. So, so we've now got the variable set up. We're going to put number 2 at 300 across and 300 down. That, that's where our barrier is going to live. Next thing we need to do is just continue to follow the, the layout that we've already made for ourselves. So create sprite. Barrier land, oh, sorry, I've done the wrong place. Create, create sprite barrier land, and we call it two. So we've got that there. Now we need to put the sprites on the screen. I'm going to cheat a bit and, and um, pinch that and just explain that. So let's have a look. So set the sprite position, barrier land, which is it. And set the x position, set the y position. So I've done that. The next thing we need to do, well, if we let's have a look, if we compile that and run it, you see we've got our our barrier and no interaction. I think I'll need I'll move that barrier very quickly. We'll put him away from where our player starts in that particular case. We will be looking at random. Um, variables as we come along. So the next thing we need to do is now start our collision pro process. Now that we've got our but now we've got our wall on the screen. So we'll call it wall collision. So there we go have wall collision and now what we need to do is start that process. And it'll be the usual way wall collision and then return. So now now we can start putting our commands in. So how how do we do a collision in AGK? So let's have a look. We've got to help. Help. And we're working with sprites, so we want to collide with it with a sprite. So let's have a look. Um, and um, we're looking for collision probably. So we've got sprite animation. Here we go, sprite collision. So there's there's the collisions, and if we click that, we can it'll, it'll see it's get sprite collision and it's sprite one and sprite two. 
it does explain here as well how it works as well and i will be covering physics uh, when we make a, a more complex game later on this is just making a, a 2d game so we know it's get sprite collision so again i'll um quickly pinch a piece of code here let's have a look so the in goes our code okay so we don't want that so we've got our go sub name return to end it and if it's one it's happened if it's zero it's nothing so so with, without with a zero we can we can leave something out so if get sprite collision good guy so that so i'm saying if the good guy commands of this uh, collides with the second sprite and it's one it it means we it means we've identified a collision so we now need to decide what we want to do so if sprite collision the good guy hits the barrier then i'm saying the good guy x position equals the last x position and the good guy y position equals the last y position i wanted to stop i wanted to stay where it is so let's compile that okay i didn't i didn't end it so compile let's have a look so now when i hit that wall I should stop and if you notice when I've hit it it's gone back to zero zero it's gone it goes back no matter where I hit from it's ending back at the default setting so why is it doing that I have basically said if there's a collision the good guy X position equals the last X position so how how can I fix this so let's have a look if if i did good guy good guy x plus equals good guy x plus minus one perhaps and i did good guy y plus minus one what will happen when i run it now Well, it's it's kind of working. It's just bouncing me off. It doesn't really know what to do. Well, the reason this is happening is because we we not we're not recording. We want him to stop, so we need to know where the where his last place was. So we need to always remember where where our where our character's last position was. So if we change this back to last X position and last y position and these are just variable names that i've made up what we need to do is we need to when we move our player we need to remember the remember the last position my uh, keyboard's not the best So we want to remember the last position that that our character is at. Remember that. So that's where we can enter our um, last y pause equals. Well, I, I've, I'll, I'll cut and continue. We, we've already done x first. So last x pause equals good guy x position. And last, oops, last y pause equals good guy y. So, so now we're saying that when we start our move player subroutine, we're saying remember the last place that he was at. So let's have a go. And now you can see. When I hit the wall, he bounces off slightly. So we've now got we've now got a collision. So we've now you can now make a game with a maze, and you just got to guide the player through the maze without touching the walls. Um, and you you could do um, 
if he if he does touch the wall, then then the game ends. So you, you could just you could you could just as easily put a command in into the wall collision to um, if if get spike is in good guy and barrier equals one you could you could just simply quit the game or you could put a screen up saying end of game so that's basically how we how we how we stop a player against the wall you you have to record where he is at all times when you're moving the player around and then you use the last position you, you set it back to the last position um one last thing that we could do is just to show you the random command I'm going to paste this in here and I'm going to remark these out of our code. We can still, it's still handy to remember where our, our character is. We leave that in and then we've got our random placement. And it's basically the, the, random, the random command. So the good guy exposition would be anywhere between north and would be between um, north and 600 so we want it to be slightly out so we, we've got an 800 by 600 screen so let's do it 750 just to keep it inside and let's do it 550 so now if there's a if there's a sprite collision uh, with the barrier then the good guy needs to be randomly placed somewhere between 800 and 600 on the screen so now when i touch the when i touch the what the barrier if the compile worked it didn't let me compile again i compiled it now now when i hit the the screen he should bounce off and go somewhere else there we are he's randomly appeared somewhere else on the screen now i've i've basically said that he's got to be between 800 across and 600 down and that basically is is quite a, f a foundation for any game because now what 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 you could do is instead of the player randomly appear, uh, appearing on the screen you could reverse that effect and have the walls reappear in and that is something we could do then with with coins or collecting anything. So in our next uh, tutorial, we'll probably put some coins on the screen and each time he takes it, the score will go up. Um, I hope you found that tutorial helpful and I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.